Hey guys, welcome back to Pixel Hunt. My name is Samir and Rao. A few weeks back, I looked out the window and it was raining like crazy. So I had this idea for a shot where, you know, I'd go really low angle and my subject would be holding an umbrella and there'd be rain pouring everywhere. We'd have that slight distortion with a 35 mm and the shot seemed really cool in my mind. So I got in the car, got to the location and once we got out of the car, the rain had completely stopped. And I thought I might, you know, be able to add some rain in post as long as there are clouds in the sky. But I looked up and the clouds had completely gone. The sun was out and it was a bright sunny day. So I figured I could go home and come back again on a rainy day. Or I could take up the challenge of getting the shot on a sunny day and then editing it in Photoshop to make it look like it was raining. So that's what this whole video is about. This is the original shot and I'm gonna make it look like this. And this whole video is just my editing process to show you how I did it. Okay, so we have the image open in Lightroom here. Uh, the first thing I want to do is crop this image. I'm going to make it a 4x5 crop so that it can be posted on Instagram. The next thing I want to do is go to basic corrections, increase the shadows because the shadows in this image are really dark. Bring down the highlights, the sky is completely blown out here so I'm going to bring down the highlights. I'm going to reduce the temperature so that it becomes a little bit cooler and I'm also going to bring down the whites. As I said, the sky is very blown out in this image. And the next thing I want to do is reduce the saturation here because I want to make it look like a cloudy day. We'll be replacing the sky entirely and adding rain in Photoshop. So it has to look like a cloudy day and cloudy days don't have a lot of saturation. Next, I'm going to take an adjustment brush and paint over the subject. And I'm going to increase the saturation of this area because I want to make this stand out from, this, from the background. So I reduced the saturation of the entire image. Now I'm going to increase the saturation of only this area so that the subject stands out from the rest of the image. I'm also going to make the temperature a little bit warmer for the same reason. I'm going to give it a contrast so that it stands out a little bit more from the background. Okay, next I'm going to go to the HSL sliders and I'm going to reduce the saturation of the blue here. Again, for the same reason, because we have a lot of blue in this image, the background is almost entirely blue and I want it to look like a cloudy day. So there's not a lot of blue on cloudy days. So I'm going to reduce the blues here. And here is a look at the before and after. Okay, so that's all I want to do with Lightroom. Now I'm going to move this over to Photoshop. All right, so I have the image open here in Photoshop. The first thing I want to do here is create a duplicate layer so that I have the main layer preserved. And now on the duplicate layer, I'm going to select the sky portion here. I'm going to use a quick select tool and try to make a quick selection. And then I'm going to go to select and mask and then try to refine that selection. So now I have this selection here. I'm going to go to select and mask. I'm going to use the refine edge brush and also the paint brush and these features on the right side here, the radius, the feather, the shift edge. And I'm just going to play around with this a little bit till I get the sky perfectly selected. Okay, now it's looking good. I'm going to select new layer with layer mask and click OK. So now we have a duplicate layer here with a layer mask on top of it. The next thing I want to do is go to pixels.com and grab a few sky images with clouds in them because my sky here doesn't have any clouds. So I'm going to go and search online for some cloudy sky images and I'm going to grab something that looks 
good so i got two images from the internet this is the first image i'm going to drop it on top of our layer here and i'm going to make it a smart object and then right click on it and select create clipping mask this is going to make the layer visible only in the sky area because the layer underneath it is just the sky portion okay so next i'm going to transform this layer i'm going to adjust the size of this image and i'm going to place it in the right position so after spending some time trying to blend this image into the foreground i realized that the second image was a much better fit so i'm going to skip ahead to the portion where i selected the second image and brought it here okay so this is the second image that i got off the internet this seems like a much better fit i'm going to do the same thing here i'm going to drop it on top of our main image i'm going to convert it to a smart object create a clipping mask and then transform it so that it fits in the right position Okay, now we have the sky in the correct location, but it doesn't look like it belongs here. So the next task is to make this blend in with the rest of the image. So there are two things that we need to do while blending this image. The first thing is we want to blend in the tones. That is, um, the, the brightest section should match the brightest sections of the rest of the image. And the darkest section should match the darkest sections of the rest of the image. So um, we are going to do that. And the second thing we are going to do is adjust the colors. So the colors also should match, like the blues here should match the blues in the rest of the image and the red should match the reds and so on. So um, the first thing we want to do is match the tones. So for this step, we are going to convert the whole image to black and white because we don't really need the colors in this image. We are just matching the tones. Okay, so in order to do that, I'm going to add a black and white adjustment layer here. Uh, this is going to be a temporary layer that we'll just delete later. Then I'm going to select the sky layer and I'm going to add a levels adjustment to it. The goal here is to make the whites match the whites of the remaining image and the blacks match the blacks. So I'm going to tweak these sliders a little bit until it looks like it matches the rest of the black and white image. Okay, I feel satisfied with the way that the black and white image is looking. It looks like it's blending well. The next thing to do is match the colors here. So in order to match the colors, I'm going to create a solid color adjustment layer. I'm going to set its blending mode to saturation. What saturation blending mode does is it really exaggerates all the colors so that we can see where the problems are and we can try to fix those. I'm going to turn off the black and white adjustment layer and I'm going to start tweaking these colors a little bit here so I'm going to select the sky layer from earlier and I'm going to bring up the levels adjustments this time I'm going to change the channels to the R G and B channels I'm going to tweak the colors so the first thing you can see here is that there's a lot of yellow in our sky and there's absolutely no yellow in the rest of the image so I'm going to go to the blue channel and I'm going to add some more blues here because blues are the opposite of yellow so I'm going to add blues in the highlights, the midtones, as well as the shadows here. Okay, now it's looking much better, but uh, the problem here is that this is a little bit more saturated and more brighter blue than we really want for this image. So first I'm going to go to the, the tones again, which is like the levels and I'm going to select the RGB channels. And I'm going to modify this a little bit so that it blends in better. Okay, next I want to bring down the saturation of the sky because the saturation of the foreground is much lesser. So I'm going to add a hue saturation adjustment to the sky layer and I'm going to reduce the saturation of the blues. Um, and I'm also going to shift the hue of the blues to a lighter blue here. Okay, that is looking pretty good, but this is not where we want the final sky to be. This is just where it looks good with the foreground. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to push the hue and the saturation further so that it gets to the place where we want it to be. And then after that, we're going to change the foreground as well to reach that same place. We want it to be like 
a really cloudy rainy day we are also going to add rain after this so i'm going to modify the sky here even though it's not going to blend perfectly with the foreground for now i'm going to change the foreground so that it's going to match the sky okay so now the sky is looking pretty good even though it doesn't blend in perfectly with the foreground we are going to change the foreground now so that it blends in better with the sky basically the sky the sky is much less saturated than the foreground now so we want to reduce the saturation and we also want to reduce the whites on the foreground okay so first i converted the foreground layer to a smart object and then i also organized all these layers renamed them deleted unnecessary ones and now i'm going to add a levels adjustment to the foreground layer what i'm going to do to this is i'm going to reduce the whites and I'm going to add a hue saturation adjustment and I'm going to reduce the saturation and the lightness of the blues. Okay, now it looks like it's blending in perfectly with the sky. Okay, now there's a little bit of a problem here. If you zoom in, you can see that there's a little bit of a tree left over from the layer with the sky. So I'm going to use the clone tool here. I'm going to add a new layer and add a clipping mask so that it's only visible underneath the building and i'm going to remove that tiny portion of that tree okay perfect okay so the next thing i noticed that looks a little bit weird is that there's no reflection of these clouds on the glass on the buildings so i'm going to add a reflection here basically i'm going to duplicate the sky layer i'm going to hit command t uh, this is going to help me distort the layer. Uh, I'm going to reduce the fill of this so that I can see what's behind it. And then I'm going to distort, right click distort and I'm going to modify this so that it looks good on the glass. Okay, about there looks good. I'm going to add a layer mask here, select the brush tool, select a completely black color and I'm going to paint over the layer mask so that it's only visible over the glass of the buildings. Okay, next I'm just going to group all of these sky replacement layers and I'm going to create a group, just call it sky replacement. All right, that is looking pretty good. The next thing we want to do is add rain. Okay, so for the rain, I'm going to create a new layer, call it rain. I'm going to fill the whole layer with completely black. And then I'm going to go to filters and add noise here. And I'm going to make sure that there's not a lot of noise, just a little bit. Yeah, that seems like it's good. Okay, next I'm going to convert this layer to a smart object. And then I'm going to change its blending mode to screen. So you're only going to be able to see the white portions, which is basically the noise and not the black background. Then I'm going to add motion blur to this layer. So go to filter, blur and motion blur. And this is going to make it look much more like rain. The next effect I'm going to add is levels. So I'm going to add a levels adjustment to this layer and I'm going to tweak the blacks and whites here until the rain looks real. I'm going to keep going back and forth between motion blur and levels here. That's why we created a smart object so that we can modify our adjustments and keep going back and forth. I'm going to speed up this portion because I went back and forth a lot here. Another thing to note here is that I also expanded my rain layer in between this because I wanted to reduce the density of the rain particles here. Okay, that is looking good for the rain. The only problem I have with this is that there's a lot of rain obstructing the subject's face here. So I, I don't want so many rain particles in front of the face. So I'm going to add a layer mask and I'm going to choose a black color for the brush and I'm going to erase off the rain particles from front of the face. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to put the rain layer in a group of its own and call it rain. All right, so that's everything that I wanted to cover in this editing process video. The next thing I actually did with this edit was I went and retouched the face of the subject here. That is a whole video in itself, so I don't want to get into that here. 
But basically what I did was I did some frequency separation to separate out the texture and the colors of the phase and then I did patching, healing and polishing on the low frequency layer and then I added some dodge and burn to bring out the features of the face and also added some colors to the cheeks, lips and eyes on the face here. So here's the before and here is the after. And finally, I just merged all the new layers, all the new effects that we created into one single layer. On this layer, I added a camera raw filter and brought up the clarity and reduced the vibrance of the entire layer. I used an adjustment brush to paint over the subject and increased the exposure of the subject. And that is it. That is the final edit. Alright, that's the end of this video for the editing process. If you are interested in knowing how I did the skin retouching for the face, you can let me know in the comments below. I can just make a dedicated video for that. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share it with all your friends. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Oh, uh, my hair just keeps growing. All the hair salons are closed. I'm not confident enough to cut my own hair. I ordered a couple of hair bands. It's gonna be fine.